Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two U's fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy Enjoy the the episode. episode. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Marsha. Long time no talk. I know. What, three days? <laughs> three days, yeah. <laughs> three long days. <laughs> we talked a lot over the last four days, or the four mm-hmm. days in California. Anyway, so we should just let people know we're back from Stitches. Yes. We've been home three days. Um, how have you been doing the last three days? Oh, my gosh. Busy. It's, it is mm-hmm. definitely worth going, but mm-hmm. um, this is a busy week. Well, it, I think it would have been a busy week regardless because there is this new law in California that mm-hmm. says that all students um, should have the opportunity to enroll in transfer level coursework, all college mm-hmm. students, regardless of their background. What we currently do is we place students, right? We do placement testing and we place them. And so Mm -hmm. they've eliminated that. So anyway, it's caused big changes. And they're registering high school students. You know, they're going to be at the high schools registering high school school students on, um, well, tomorrow. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so we, they built this placement software. And so we've been, we've been uh, testing it, like, you know, just pretending we're students and doing different scenarios and testing the software and finding bugs and getting the Mm -hmm. bugs fixed and madly. Then we found too many bugs on when, on Tuesday. So we had to do another round of testing today because they're going out tomorrow to use it. (laughs) So it's a very exciting thing. It will help students be able to finish faster. There's lots of reasons that our whole system of prerequisites doesn't work well, um, mm-hmm. and this gives gives students an opportunity to rise to the challenge of transfer level math and English. Um, so that's exciting, but oh my gosh, it's been a lot of work, and the legislature didn't give us much time to get this implemented. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so well, that's where I've been busy doing. All right, well, we'll both take a deep breath <laughs> and just, uh, yeah. <laughs> And have a nice conversation. Yeah. So, so we should talk. We need to talk Stitches West. Yes, it was so fun. Mm-hmm. It was. I had a it, great time. And it was so sort of restorative. Mm-hmm. If I had been coming into this week and all the work and stuff without having had that, mm-hmm. I think I would be just totally fried. But because of Stitches, I just feel really. I mean, I'm tired, but yeah, it was super restorative. Mm-hmm. Very inspirational and yeah. No, it was a it was a great four days. Um, I had so much fun walking around the marketplace, seeing all the oh the new colors, and then of course um, you know it's it's so much fun seeing everybody, meeting mm-hmm. people, uh, talking to the vendors, but then talking to listeners and talking to the people that we've met over the years. Yeah, we always kind of get a chance to reconnect and laugh. So it was. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I haven't laughed so hard. I mean, four days, pretty much. Of of, laughing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Really fun. Uh, Really fun. Everybody needs to have that much laughter Mm -hmm. just to kind of recharge your spirits. (laughs) Well, do you want to talk about uh, our projects then? And. Yeah, Do it a well, little bit differently. Should we talk about what we wore down there? Yeah, at let's talk first about what we wore at Stitches. Okay. So, what about you? Well, I had just finished. Here, the audio cut out, but Marcia said, "Cloud Cover" by Heidi Kermeyer. So I wore that. I think two days. I think, and it was very comfortable too because it's it's fifty fifty merino silk, so it's warm, but it's really lightweight. 
Um, mm-hmm. And it, it, it feels like it fits really well, too. So I really um, am enjoying that sweater. And then... Um, yeah, I, I thought it looked really good. Yeah, I, I'm. Thank you. I liked it. It, it um, one of the nicest sweaters I think I've made in a while. And then I also wore my um, combo spin sweater that I made a year ago. I think um, it's the one that I wore to Scotland. I think mm-hmm. I wore it every day in Scotland, so I wore it <laughs> just one day at Stitches. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your second combo spin, right? Yeah, my second one. And so yeah. the pattern I use for that is simple summer tweed pattern. That's also Heidi Kermeyer. Remember, we were talking about my my Heidi Ker- Kermeyer face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, those two I wore by her. Um, okay. So, yeah. And how about you? Well, I know what you well, wore. <laughs> I wore the Mystery Knit Along shawl mm-hmm. by Cozy Up Knits. And I had finished it, and I just needed to block it. I think as of the last episode, so I got it blocked, and so I wore that, um, and then I also, and that's made out of our own yarn, the Replenish Rambouillet, it's a fingering weight Rambouillet yarn that I dyed the colors for, mm-hmm. they're sort of in the theme of redwood, so there's a kind of a redwood leaf green, redwood frond, mm-hmm. I guess you call them fronds, I don't know, needles. And it's the color of the redwood trees, the green part. So that's one of the colors. And then there's a brown that is kind of like, kind of a, it's a warm, really warm brown. It kind of leans toward, almost toward kind of pink. And then there's a, a variegated that has a pale brown and then that darker redwood brown and the redwood green and some other, some other, uh, pops of color in it. Um, so I was glad to have finished that in time. And then the other thing I wore, two things that I wore, one were things I've already finished um, and have been wearing for a while. One of them was the Running Water Cardigan, and that's by Claudia Eisenkolb. I got a lot of compliments. A lot of people wanted to know what the sweater was. It looks really nice, Kelly. Because it's not one of the most popular ones. I think when I made it, it had maybe fewer than 30 people had made the pattern. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to be watching it to see, like, did did all those people that I told, did, did they suddenly go cast on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now the number of projects has doubled. And then the other thing that I wore that I just, I pretty much wear constantly at home is the Funky Grandpa. Mm-hmm. And that was made out of my hand spun from a long time ago, very old hand spun mm-hmm. um, from Charlotte, the, the sheep named Charlotte. And I... I do wear that a lot. I wear that a lot at home, and I brought it along to to throw on at, at Stitches. And I think I wore that a couple of days, the mm-hmm. first day and the last day. Mm-hmm. It's just an easy yeah. sweater to wear. So Yeah. And that pattern, the Funky Grandpa, mm-hmm. it's by Maison Really Lee. Mm-hmm. It's a nice pattern. I like that pattern, too. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what what we were wearing. Kelly, I just have to say too, I, I finished a project, not at oh, Stitches, yay. but I finished, I finished it last night and it's the, um, the slack tied scarf that I was making for my brother. I bound off last night and washed and blocked it. So it's all ready to give him. Oh, nice. That's so good. Finished... Cause that's that yarn you really didn't care for working with, right? It's true. It's the it, Hiku uh, concentric and it's really nice yarn. It feels really nice once it's knit up in the fabric, but it's just the four singles that, I mean, it's wound in a ball and a cake as four singles. So it's very splitty and you have to do on one side, you knit two together. And on the other side, that stitch that is formed from the knit two together, then you, you know, knit through the front and back. So there's a lot of, yeah. I mean, the whole thing is that pattern. So it's, I didn't find the, the knit through the front and back was so much a problem, but the knit two together was sort of a challenge with that yarn. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really like the pattern. I really like the yarn, but not together. I mean, well, right. let me just say they turned out beautifully, but the process was not 100% right. enjoyable because of the, the way that yarn is constructed. But anyway, it's done and uh, ready to give him. So. All right. So then we should just talk about what we worked on while we were down there okay. at Stitches. Well, I worked pretty much, well, the whole time I worked on the pullover that I'm making called Mountain High 
by, again, Heidi Kermeyer. Um, and I'm using the Croft Shetland Tweed by Yorkshire, uh, West Yorkshire Spinners. I knit a lot on that, Kelly. I, I'm yeah, trying to think. You did. On the plane down, I was working on the Raglan sleeve increases. And then I think the first day or the afternoon, I think I joined under the arms. Okay, and yeah, just it knit- wasn't that, it didn't take you that long to get to the point where you joined under the arms. I remember that. Yeah, so I have knit probably, I'm going to say 10 inches now from nice. the underarm down. So it's coming along really fast. It's it's DK weight yarn, and I'm using size 7 needles, so it's going pretty quickly. But then I also had a lot of time to knit because, uh, and then coming home, I think you dropped me off at 3 and then I got to, and by the time I got through security, it was like 3.30, I got um, something to eat. And then I sat and waited. I just sat and knitted till my flight at 5.50, and then I knitted on the plane. So, I mean, like I had a solid four hours of knitting. Right. You know? Well, <laughs> and the, even before that, we came out of the market on Sunday and then uh, just sat in the lobby for a little while knitting and resting. Yeah. So, yeah, you got a lot of knitting time on Sunday. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I got a lot. So, and what did you work on? Well, as you know, <laughs> I I wasn't able to be very productive at stitches and and usually I am, but I the pattern that really the only active project that I have right now is the Karu cardigan by Aroha Knits. Mm-hmm. And I really like the sweater. I really like the pattern and it's it's not even that difficult. It has three charts. Um, of traveling stitches, one on the left front, one on the right front. And both of those are maybe like 10 stitches wide. Mm -hmm. And then it has like a a larger one, maybe 30 stitches wide across the back. And it's not hard, but I just found myself not able to, not able to follow the charts and I was making mistakes. And so I, I knit on that the first night we were there and I got some pretty good progress And then after that, once it became more busy and there were more people and more things Mm -hmm. going on, there was less room to put my piece of paper with all my charts out and I had less attention and then I started having some problems. And so I just, uh, I just put it away. Luckily Mm -hmm. I did bring uh, yarn for mother Mm -hmm. bears. I had one bear started and I got it all the way to the point where it needs to have some stuffing before I finish up the legs because I don't want to. I don't want to stuff it through little tiny leg tubes. I'd much Mm -hmm. rather stuff it before I put the legs on. So, and then, and then knit the legs down and then stuff, you know, if I stuff just the legs from the bottom of the legs, that's fine. But I don't want to stuff the whole thing from the bottom Mm -hmm. of the legs. So, yeah. So I stopped that one, put it on uh, holders and I started a second mother bear. Uh, So, so that was my knitting. Most of my, uh, most of my during stitches knitting was was knitting on, uh, trying to knit on my Karoo cardigan and then putting mm-hmm. it away and grabbing instead the mother bear. So I didn't get a whole lot of knitting done, but but I got, you know, more of a mother bear knit than I would if I hadn't been at stitches. Right? I wouldn't have been knitting mother bears at all if I wasn't at stitches. So Right, right. So that was good. I'll have I'll have a couple of additional mother bears to to start me off for the summer when I usually knit more of them. Mm -hmm. So, but that's really all. Oh, I did work on my swatch for my class. I wanted to make sure I told listeners about the class. I took a market class at Stitches and these classes are great. Uh, Very inexpensive. Once you have the market class, you actually have admission to the market for the whole time, including the Thursday night preview. So, you know, if you've ever felt like, oh, you really wanted to go to the market the whole time, but you didn't want to, you didn't want to take a full length class, you know, three hours or six hours, and you didn't want to pay for the market every day, this is a great way. I think it was, Mm -hmm. I want to say it was $35, which is, which is about what you would have paid for three three days of market price, maybe a little bit more, Mm -hmm. but you also get the class and then you get to get in on Thursday night. So that's, um, 
for, for those of you who have never taken a class at Stitches, I really highly recommend looking through the market class offerings. Mm -hmm. And even if there's nothing you really want to take, just try something. It's only like 45 minutes to an hour. You're not giving up mm -hmm. a whole bunch of time in the marketplace, you know, yeah. or time when you could be socializing and knitting in the lobby. So I took one of those classes. Um, I've done that a few times at Stitches. And the class that I took was double knitting because one of the things I want to do this year is work on that blanket. The It's called Such is the Quality of Bees by Mona Zilla. And it'll match the pillow that I did last summer that was called Clover Bee and Reverie. And mm -hmm. that's the pattern doesn't call for it to be double knit. The pattern calls for it to be just done, done in color work. Mm -hmm. But somebody's project page has it in double knit. And once I got that bee in my bonnet, pun intended, <laughs> I just couldn't mm -hmm. I just couldn't resist. I I want to do that blanket and I want to do it in double knit so that it doesn't have a backside. So on the in the class, we did a little sample and oh my gosh, it's going to take me forever because <laughs> double knitting is I guess it won't be awkward forever. Right now, double knitting is awkward because... It, it, I say, Kelly, it will not be awkward if you do an entire blanket. Right. Double, <laughs> By the time I'm done. You'll be the double knit <laughs> expert after that blanket, yeah. By the time I'm done. So I got pretty comfortable with double knit where there was no color work, right? It's just one color on one side and one color on the other mm -hmm. side. So it's it's two colors, but they're not making any kind of design right but then we also did a design and that was a little bit mind bending uh, we mm -hmm. were all in the class we were all kind of like wait what <laughs> 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 it made so much sense until we started doing this and like wait whoa wait a minute because it doesn't <laughs> you can't see the color work so well until you're on the row after it because mm -hmm. while you're knitting the row your row is yarns of every other color, right? Every other yarn, every other stitch is a different color. So you don't right. see the pattern so much. You really can't mm -hmm. see the pattern. I mean, maybe you can after you do it for a while, but because the colors are alternating all the way across the row, it's hard to see the, the pattern. Um, mm -hmm. You can see the edge of the pattern if you really concentrate, because then you have two stitches of the same color at the edge of the pattern. Right. But in the middle of the pattern, you just have every other stitch a different color. It'll be a challenge. I need to do a lot more swatching. Um, I do have some of the neighborhood fiber company that I use for the pillow left, so I can I can even swatch with the yarn I'm going to use and get the feel for it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an epic, epic project because it's going to yeah. be slow. I think it's going to be slow. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm comfortable with it, I think it's still going to be slow. I have a question. Can you put uh, markers in where the color changes take place now? I, you, know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but they'll move every row. Like if you think about the design, right? So like uh. let's say we were, doing a, so, so we were doing something fairly simple, which was a heart. So mm -hmm. you're going along and, and you put like one stitch of color work. And then the next row is three stitches of color work as the heart mm -hmm. gets wider from the bottom, right? And then the next row is five right. stitches of color work, et cetera. Because it's a big, it's like a, a regular shape, right? A heart shape mm -hmm. or a triangle, essentially, at the bottom of the heart. Right. And that was hard enough. But the bee pillow has all these little swirly, curly cues, mm. right? So yeah. even mm -hmm. when I was doing the pillow, not double knit, just one-sided, I still had to really pay attention to the color chart because it wasn't necessarily intuitive which direction this little swirly leaf was going or the little vein on the bee, right? Is this going to mm -hmm. go to the left or is it going to go to the right? And so I had to, I had to watch the chart to do that. So yeah. it's, it's definitely going to be challenging, uh, but, but I'm, I want to do it. So I will, I will figure it out and it will work I, eventually. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, there are quite a few pot holders in my future, let's just say. <laughs> Double knit pot holders. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I think it's a very cool stitch. I, it's, 
uh, very interesting finished product. And you had mentioned that the teacher said that in one of the booths there was a beautiful um, double knit shawl mm-hmm. that had a dragon. Wasn't it a dragon? Yeah, or a unicorn, I think or, it was. Unicorn or something. Anyway, it, it was really interesting to look at it. So that shawl was not anywhere near the size of the blanket that you're right. going to make, but a tremendous amount of work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to be able to see an example. I, I wouldn't mm-hmm. have expected to see anything in double knitting out in one of the booths, but yeah. So I, I want to take, um, there's a class that's, it's been full the different times that I've looked for it at Stitches. It's called Extreme Double Knitting, but I'm not going to wait to start my blanket for that. I'm just going to, mm-hmm. I'm just going to practice, make some pot holders because we need them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then go from there and see if I'm, when I'm ready yeah. to start. When I feel comfortable, I'll go ahead and get started. So, yeah, that was my – the extent mm-hmm. of my knitting at Stitches was a mother bear, aborted attempts at my Kourou cardigan, and uh, some continuation of my double knit swatch after my class. Mm-hmm. So not very, uh, yeah. not very inspirational knitting for people who were seeing what I was working on. When mm-hmm. people asked you what you were working on, it was kind of nice because you was like, oh, I'm doing this pattern. Oh, I haven't ever seen that pattern. Oh, that looks like a nice pattern. <laughs> Mine weren't <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I have to say, too, that your Karu, the color is um, it's a dark blue. Mm-hmm. And and I realized that um, we should say that the Stitches West um, show is held at the well, it's the Hyatt, but it isn't it the Santa's. No, it's the Santa Clara mm-hmm. Conference Center, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it's attached to the Hyatt Hotel, and we did a lot of time, did a lot of time, spent a lot of time in the lobby, and they don't have the best lighting in no. there. But then, or seating, we should talk. Oh, the couches that, are the, so the deep. Seats, yeah, they're very, very deep. And I mean, if you sat back with your back against the, um. The you know you're back against the back of the seat. Your legs would probably stick straight <laughs> right, out, right? Right. Because mine would too. Or you have to lay like you lay on them, kind of like you're all slouched right. down. They're yeah. very very uncomfortable. Um, but again, the hotel is not um, designed for knitters to go and sit, the, hang out there all. <laughs> I mean, they they don't expect people to right. sit up, hang out in the in the lobby for four days right. uh, knitting. But so we manage. They don't have. Yeah. To, we managed, but it is dark mm-hmm. in there. And, well, uh, I bought myself and, and, a light. Somebody yes. was talking about it on their show, and now I can't remember who it was, but it's called a a Legel, L-E-D-G-L-E mm-hmm. light, and it it has a, a charging cord that you can use, like your phone charger, to mm-hmm. to charge it. And it has two LED lights. It goes around your neck. And on either side of your neck, it's like a, a flexible cable that goes around your neck. Mm-hmm. And then there's a light at each end of, you know, mm-hmm. of this cable. And in the light, there's actually two LED lights. So you have on each side, you actually have three settings. One of the lights on, the other light on, and there are different brightnesses. So you can have light number one on by itself, light number two on by itself, or both lights on at the same time for the brightest. Okay. And then, you know, you do that on both sides. And I bought that specifically because I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about it. And I thought, oh my gosh, that'd be perfect for stitches with this dark blue yarn. And actually it's perfect. Mm-hmm. It's perfect for my living room with the dark yeah. the yarn. <laughs> so I'm getting a lot of yeah. use out of it, even though I didn't really get much use out of it at stitches. I've been getting a lot of use out of it. So, so that's a, yeah. uh, that's a really good thing to have is, is some kind of light, uh, you know, he- a headlamp. I, I mean, you could have a headlamp, not the ideal light, not the ideal seating, but we didn't seem to, mi- we didn't seem to, uh, let it stop us. We were yeah. all knitting, yeah. <laughs> hundreds of knitters. Yeah, everybody was knitting like crazy, yeah. Sitting around, so yeah. I think that's the fun, the most fun part is to see all those people all knitting. The other thing that's fun about sitting in the lobby is, you know, talking to people, but then also just watching all of the knitted mm-hmm. um, objects go by. Yes. <laughs> and, um, 
And it's really fun, too, because there we don't even know the name of the pattern, but there's one colorwork sweater that oh, must have been the most popular. I do know which um, one that is. Oh, I don't you do? know how you pronounce I it. I don't know if you pronounce it Zwieg or Zweig. Okay. But that's, yeah. The one with the kind of lacy top. Yeah. Yes. Like the yoke, the yoke is, if you imagine a color work sweater where the yoke is all the color work, the yoke is actually lace. And then it has a little bit of color work below it. Um, and I think some on the bottom, like the mm-hmm. bottom hem, I think, and maybe the sleeves. But it's a cute sweater, but so many people have yes. that sweater on. Uh, Caitlin Hunter pattern. Very popular. Yeah. Yeah, everybody had that sweater on. So, And that was kind of fun to see all the different color mm-hmm. combinations. And a lot of color work sweaters with that speckled yarn is yeah. still really yeah. popular. Um, and lots of fades. Yeah. Lots of sweaters with the mm-hmm. faded look. One thing we saw that was different um, that I think is really worth worth a look is that shawl that the three women who were who were in they were in like the, they had done in the same knitting group and they had all done the shawl but differently. Yes, it was called mm-hmm. pennant. Mm-hmm. That was a nice one. It's a shawl where one end of the shawl tucks through like buttonholes that like slits so on one end of the shawl it's it's just a big long triangle but it's like a sideways yeah, triangle well, and i think the re- well i was going to say i think the reason why it's called pennant is if you lay it out right. flat it actually looks like a pennant you know so it's it's a triangle but the one side is short and then the two long sides right. that make a really long mm-hmm. elongated triangle so then that the long pointy bit would wrap around you and on the that large straight side of the triangle um there's like four would you say four or five slits so then it just weaves through those little like buttonholes kind of that it that pointy end weaves through there and very very attractive yeah it was nice and it was fun because there's three women that all had the the shawl on one had done a stripe alternating like a gray and a blue the other one it was all over the same color but kind of a mottled color but all i mean the same yarn through the whole um shawl and then the other woman had her hand spun but it was a gradient Um, and that was really interesting too as you have the um i don't remember now which way it went but say the the whiter part that had the kind of buttonhole shapes in it was the dark color and then the lighter part of the gradient was on that little pointy bit that would wrap around and go through the, the darker part so it was really interesting i mean um Everybody, I think it's a really adaptable shawl for the yarn you're using. You can use multiple yarns. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. it was, it was really nice. I think I might make one of those. I actually have a different name, different ver- free version of that pattern. Pennant is by Laura Ayler, and I can't find it now, the, the one I have in my library. But I have a free version that's similar to that pattern. Um, in my pattern library, when we were looking for the pattern, it popped up, and I'm like, "Oh wait, I think I have that pattern." Um, and sure enough, I did. But now I can't. I can't seem to find it or the name of it. But, but yeah, it's an. It was. It was fun to see what people made. Really inspirational. Yeah. That's always the best thing about. Well, no, the best thing about stitches is the people, but the second best thing about stitches is getting inspired about the things you want to make. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And yeah. and people know yeah. I have not been very inspired recently, right? I've had mm-hmm. no projects or small projects or one project um, for a long time. I mean, since I cleaned out my queue in December, uh, I really haven't been, I really haven't gotten too inspired to do, you know, like, oh, I have to cast on this. Oh, I have to cast on that. I haven't been that way. Uh, but But I now have... I now have two cast-ons. <laughs> oh, I now have two projects, <laughs> two two active projects. Oh, yeah. good. But that kind of brings us to uh, what we saw at Stitches. Yes. Okay. So I have to talk about the first thing we saw. Okay. I'm going to take the lead on this Go one, ahead. Because <laughs> we walked, it was Friday night, or excuse me, Thursday mm-hmm. night, and we walked in, and the first booth that we really caught my eye was Ellen's Wooly Wonders. Yeah. And I said to Kelly, oh my gosh, look at this. And you're like, I have to, and you're like, I have to have that. (laughs) 
So and what did we see that we were so captivated by? She does, um, she knits um, felted animals and flowers. Creatures, and yeah. what we were captive creatures, yeah, like uh, dinosaurs and uh, dragons. And there's an octopus. And what, uh, you saw um, for your mom. Um, oh, the Pomeranian. It's Penny. A pom- mm-hmm. The Pomeranian, a llama, a pig. But anyway, what we got so excited about were the skulls. So she actually mm-hmm. has felted skulls. And they're like full size. And they're like regular, like full size skulls. Yes. And so there's three types. The first one is like a regular skull with a, a jaw that moves mm-hmm. and um, teeth and eye sockets. And... They are so, I get the sounds really morbid, but they're so expressive. They're so funny and so endearing and so just whimsical yeah, and charming. Yeah, it's kind of like, something do you about remember them. those dried apple dolls that people yes. made? And, and <laughs> I always thought they were kind of creepy, but every one had a different personality because you can't control how the yeah. apple dries, right? The dried right. apple was the face and all wrinkly. And so you can't control how the apple dries, and so everyone was different. And it's kind of like this. You can't exactly control how the felting happens. And so mm-hmm. all of these skulls that she had were slightly different. They had different personalities. Their teeth were going yeah. in different ways. I mean, they just, it was so fun. They were so fun. Yeah, they really were. And then the second one she had was actually a, a skull, but all the parts were labeled. So sort of like a skull that you, you would use in anatomy right. class. And so the, the different parts bones, were different colors yeah. of wool. Yeah, so that was kind of fun. And then the one that you were also really captivated by, though, were the sugar mm-hmm. skulls. And they were not the full rounded skull. They were sort of like flat skulls. Kind of like skulls a mask. That, um, yeah, a mask. A mask, or yeah. just a decoration shape. They look, I haven't. I haven't started one, so I don't know for sure, but just by glancing through the pattern and by looking at them, they look like they would be really quick and fast, where if you wanted to do them as a gift, isn't this horrible? I want to give a gift of my loving handiwork to someone, but only if it's fast. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Only if I don't have to spend a lot of time on it. (laughs) But they look like they would be fast, and the kind of thing that you Mm -hmm. could do as a gift... And not, you know, not have to spend a lot of, a lot of, um, oh, a lot of time, but they would be really effective. Yeah. People would, I think, I, I know several people who would really like one and I could imagine doing them mm-hmm. as a gift. Whereas if, if somebody said, oh, I really like that full size skull, I would say, oh, thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't think, oh, I'll make one for them. <laughs> kind of no. like the octopus I made, you know, um, no, I'm not making the octopus for anyone. That's not the kind of knitting I would do as a gift, I don't think. Now, you bought the pattern for the sugar skulls Mm -hmm. and the directions for the the embroidery that goes on it. No, I did not buy the directions for the embroidery. Oh, you did not? Okay. I figured I could. Okay. I could figure that part out. And I bought the pattern just for the skull. Mm -hmm. But I also bought then, she has her hand spun that you can use for the skulls. And I decided just to go ahead and buy that, even though I have some, because I just want to get started Mm -hmm. on it. So... I, I just bought her, yeah, as I say, I bought the hand spun for the skull, the teeth, um, the, I believe the the sport yarn weight, for the skull is bulky. Oh, okay. I think yeah, it's bulky, Yeah, the teeth are sport weight. Yes, and I don't, ha- I don't think I have that. I'm going to have to go look. When you really start looking in the booth, there's just some really darling things. Um, a lot of the, um, she has a lot of heads, you know, like uh, horse heads and unicorn heads sheep heads whatever that you can put on a um a stick like so a, a child would use it as like a little pony or yeah what do you like call a stick that horse. you know where you have stick horse thank you that's the right term and um so even the skulls have that too if i want to <laughs> stick skull i guess <laughs> or its head on a pike or something i don't know um so she has a lot of those then she has all the different animals that she makes um, and then also the flowers. We have to mention the flowers because she has patterns so you can knit snapdragons and iris. A Christmas um, cactus. Petunias. A Christmas cactus. Succulents. Pussy willows. Um, sunflower. A sunflower. Yeah. yeah, we'll link to what her else? project page in the 
or her her pattern yeah um, you know her website where you can see her patterns in the show notes and I it's really worth worth a look to go and see all of these yeah. patterns her name is um, Ellen Sibelius I think mm-hmm. and um, she actually will create a pattern she'll create a custom pattern for like thirty dollars mm-hmm. she said she creates mm-hmm. a custom pattern. 30, 35. Five. Is it 30 or 35? 35. 35. It was, I think it's 35. You know, it was I don't more remember. than just a generic reasonable. pattern, but really I thought f- reasonable mm-hmm. for, I mean, it seems like that would be a lot of work to make a pattern. Yeah. So, but when she's made it, she said you get to name it. If you, you know, if you've ordered it, you get to name it. That's why the skull is called Daphne's skull. It's yeah. just really well worth a look to go to her website and take a look. Yeah, at it was just a really, really fun, uh, whimsical, charming mm-hmm. booth. You know, the things she had that were just really, you know, had a sense of mm-hmm. humor and just really, really kind of magical. Yeah. It really was, uh, her, her, her ideas are so clever. So and if anyway. your, your, your um, sweater drawer is bulging with sweaters and your sock drawer is bulging with socks and mm-hmm. you definitely don't need another shawl, maybe you need a skull. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing too, I, Kelly, I have to admit though, I was looking at my photographs. I was telling somebody when I got home about the skull and I said, here, let me show you a picture of it. And I realized I never took a picture of the skull. I could have oh, sworn we I took had, video. And, but yeah. that's gone. Cause it so was anyway, a I didn't take video a video on Instagram. Hmm. Yeah. But I did take a picture though of the, uh, my other favorite thing in the booth was the, um, albatross chick oh, right it was so cute and the expression on that chick was so cute so we do have a picture of that so maybe we can post at least the picture of the yeah. albatross that, well, that it's, to we're me, together that holding the to chick me. so that was a really fun booth so let's talk about some of the other booths so we talk about um kelly um amazing yarns that booth my dream project yes so <laughs> the other really exciting booth for us was amazing yarns and that's a yarn shop near Redwood City in California. So pretty local to where Stitches West is held. She has quite a bit, what seemed like her specialty in her shop was hand spun, what they call in the spinning world, what they call tail spun yarn, where you spin Mm -hmm. and at the same time you spin in locks of fleece. And so you've got these Mm -hmm. locks kind of sticking out from your yarn and then you ply it with a thread to kind of stabilize the yarn because it's really lightly spun. So you ply it with a thread and you make sure when you ply it that you don't catch those, those locks that are sticking mm-hmm. out in the plies. So I you know, was looking at the yarn and, and I, I've seen that kind of yarn before. I've taken a class to make that kind of yarn. I never really thought much about what you would do with it, but she had in her samples this jacket made out of this yarn. And the backstory on this is that when I was about nine, my mom sewed, you know, sewed for me, sewed clothes and stuff, and and I sewed a little too. Um, But we were at the fabric store and I saw this fake fur that basically looks like a long wool fleece. And, you know, I mean, in my nine-year-old brain, that's what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with this fabric. And so my mom, for Christmas that year, um, made me this jacket. And when I opened that box on Christmas Eve and found that jacket, oh, my God, I was so happy I was just so excited. It immediately went on me, and I have a picture of me with, like, the biggest smile ever. I just just remember just only good feelings about that jacket. And so when I saw this jacket, it was like, oh, my God, my, my, my jacket from my nine-year-old self is now an adult <laughs> version of that jacket. I have to have it. And I tried it on, and, well, first I thought, oh, I have to try this on. And then I tried it on, and I thought, I have to have this jacket. I have to. And then I went and looked at the yarn and I saw, of course, it's hand spun. So hand spun is more expensive. I looked at the yarn and I thought, mm-hmm. mm, okay, well, and Marsha's like, what do, what do I do? What do I do? Am I supposed to encourage you? Am I supposed to discourage yes. you? Yes. Like, do you want me to say walk said, away or do you want me to say buy it? <laughs> 
Yes, I'm asking, how sh- what's the best way to support you? Tell you to walk away or tell you to buy it? <laughs> because you, you also said that you could spin mm-hmm. that yarn. I mean, you, you know how to yes. do it. So uh, there was that but dilemma. But would I do it? No, but, probably not. Yes. So anyway, yeah. we, we, I did walk away, but I was pretty sure I was going to walk back. And I did walk back, and I did get the yarn. Um, and I actually cast on right that night. <laughs> We walked out of the marketplace. Mm-hmm. I wound the yarn on my, le- you know, put the yarn on my legs, wound it out of the skein and into a ball and cast on immediate. Oh, and I bought needles mm-hmm. too, size 19 needles. And I just mm-hmm. cast on immediately. And and then I, I decided to slow down because I really kind of want to savor the process. I don't want it to go too fast. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. so, yeah, that's really exciting. This project is so fun. And... I'm going to be so excited to wear it. And it's not everyone's cup of tea for sure, but it just has so many good associations for me. That it's not everybody's cup of tea was evidenced uh, sitting in the lobby when you were showing yes. everybody <laughs> what you had purchased and the reactions, we the, the varied reactions was really yeah. fun. I have to say that was yeah. really fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, And it's going to be really pretty. I, I think... When you when you see it on, it's going to be really really stunning. You know, it's not everyone's mm-hmm. style, but it's but it still will be uh, a very handsome jacket. So I'm looking forward. Yeah, no, it's mm-hmm. good looking. It's uh, I think it's good because it'll be really it'll work well with mm-hmm. jeans, but it's also quite elegant too. Mm-hmm. You know, if you had it's a, the the locks uh, are mohair. It's a silver. I never said what color, but it's a mm-hmm. silver gray mohair, and so really shiny. You know, that you've got the sheen of the mohair, and so it does have mm-hmm. kind of an elegance to it. If you if you wore it with the right thing, it could be really elegant, yeah. So I'm really yeah. looking forward yeah. to having that. Mm-hmm. I got super inspired mm-hmm. by that dream project from Amazing Yarns. Totally amazing project. Yeah. <laughs> My newest cast on. So then we saw some other booths mm-hmm. that we liked, too. So I was just going to mention, we saw Lady Die yarns. We liked her yarns very yeah. much. And I bought there, I bought a skein of DK. It's 100% merino. And the colorway is called Amadeus. And Kelly, do you remember this is the one that has mm-hmm. the yellow mm-hmm. and blue and dark charcoal yeah, gray in it and pretty. white? Um, it's really pretty. Um, so I think I'm going to... I think I have it. I'm going to just make a hat out of that. That'll I think. be nice. We bought a prize from Lady Dye's booth. Mm-hmm. So we'll have, uh, for an upcoming giveaway, we'll have a, a Lady Dye yarns prize. And then mm-hmm. we also um, in really spent some time in a Neighborhood Fiber Company, of course, mm-hmm. and have some prizes from there. I had thought about that I was going to buy the yarn for my blanket. Because I know what yarn I want for my blanket. I want Neighborhood Fiber Company. Mm-hmm. I want the color Oliver. And I want the com- the color, Dru- I think it's called Druid Hill. The That mm-hmm. fig brown color. Before we even went to Stitches, I had decided I wasn't going to buy the yarn for that blanket yet. Because that's uh, a lot of yarn. And then I would feel mm-hmm. like I couldn't buy anything else. Right. It, it would be, I mean, yeah. okay. It's kind of silly because I know I'm going to buy it eventually, but it would have been like my whole stitches budget as a, as opposed yeah. to buy something at stitches and then, you know, buy that as, as the year goes on. Cause I'm not going to start that blanket anytime soon. Right. So I'll wait until I'm closer yeah. to actually starting the blanket, but that didn't stop us from looking in the booth and uh, buying mm-hmm. a few things there yeah. prizes and we got pins to match our unity shirts yes i'm wearing mine right are now. you yeah mm-hmm. and i love that shirt i i bought the shirt two years ago but it's just it's really comfortable and then i also just like the the symbol on it the unity symbol that they have as their yeah as their it's yeah. not their official logo of neighborhood fiber company but it's a it's known to be their, you know, sort of their trademark. Mm-hmm. And then the other place that really stood out to us was one of the another one of the first booths we saw on Thursday night, and that was Bay Street Yarns. Mm-hmm. And she's a new dyer. Uh, she was sharing a booth with two other makers, Project Bag Maker, and then 
another dyer, I think. Yes, uh, that nano stitch that's labs. Right. I think oh, that's right. The... Nano yeah. stitch labs, yeah. And so the three of them were sharing a single booth, which really that's a good way to go when you're new. Yeah, it really makes sense because it really cuts. To, I mean, I have no idea what the booths cost, but I'm sure they're not inexpensive. Right. So that's one way to share the, the cost. Yeah. yeah. So Annie was there with her sister. She's the, the dyer. And so uh, we talked with her and we talked with her sister. And she she's from uh, Anderson, California, which is up near where they had fires, um, the campfire mm-hmm. and the car fire. And so she had uh, two different colorways that she had dyed uh, that the proceeds went to the fire relief for both the campfire that was in uh, Paradise area and then the car fire that was, I think that was the one in Redding, uh, near Redding. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, we talked to her about that. And then she had other, other colors, of course, that were, her colors were really pretty. Well, and I should say I bought, uh, there I bought two skeins of the DK weight and it, it's the colorway that the proceeds go to the um, right. Car fire. I think that's called Mercury Retrograde. Yes, it is. I have it right here. Mercury Retrograde. It's a four ply DK called Jack. Okay. J A C. Yeah, and we got a skein of that also for the giveaway. Uh, not the DK though. The fingering weight version um, we have mm-hmm. as a giveaway. A giveaway yarn. It's really pretty. Red and charcoal and a little bit of like yellow and. I mean, it looks like fire. And, um, and, well, and some teal in there, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really pretty. pretty. And then the other one for the fire was called Paradise Lost. And I don't know that she even had any of that left. Her sister was wearing a sweater made out of that, that yarn. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't see any of that left on the shelf by the end, by the end of Stitches when we were, when we were over mm-hmm. there to buy I didn't see any of that left on the shelf. Uh, she was new to stitches and, and sounded like she was having a great time. And then I also have to mention, well, I was talking to her sister and we were telling her that, you know, that we had a podcast and giving her our card. And she was sheepishly admitting that she didn't listen to knitting podcasts. But she gave a <laughs> podcast recommendation. Yes. Ghosts in the Burbs. <laughs> have you listened yes. yet, Kelly? I listened to episode <laughs> one this morning. Oh my God, it's good. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's good. Have you listened? I have not listened yet, but I downloaded the um, the podcast and I got a notice that there was a new one up. So I'm going to try and listen. So don't listen tonight. Do not listen tonight. (laughs) Well, I read the reviews in the morning, and it said (laughs) yes. I read the reviews, and apparently it's like ghost stories, Mm -hmm, kind of. Or mm -hmm. but all the stuff is like you know don't don't listen at night. You know, close the blinds. Yeah. Don't go outside. Don't drive in your. Don't walk down the street by yourself. Don't drive your car by yourself. Yeah, um, you have to be. If you don't want to sleep in the company of people in full daylight to listen to this podcast. <laughs> no, it it was really <laughs> it was really good. The first episode, if if the rest of them are like this, it was really good. And okay. it's short. It's about twenty minutes. I listened mm-hmm. to it this morning while I was getting ready for work. So, yeah, highly recommended, at least from the first episode. If you like ghost stories. Yeah. Or, yeah. or like the narrative yeah. story kind of podcast. It's well done. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kelly, the other booth that we visited was Knitting on the Fringe. Mm-hmm. And you bought that really cool bag. Oh, yeah, my felted bag. Uh, and it's really cool. It's a felted bag, like a like where you put your computer in, I think. Isn't that kind of the shape or yeah, like a briefcase my computer, kind of shape? My, com- my computer doesn't doesn't fit perfectly well. I have to kind of finagle it to get it in there, uh, my work computer. Um, but it, it, it mm-hmm. works for my papers. I've been using it, you know, to, to cart my papers back and forth that I have to grade. And, like, if I need to bring my notebook and, you know, it's like my, I've used it like my briefcase this week. Okay. And it's worked really well. Well, and the other thing that's really cute about it, though, is it has a separate felt piece that buttons on mm-hmm. that, has, that has a printed image of... Um, so you got the one that has the scissors, right? And then you could buy us you could buy different ones, so you can swap them out. So you bought the second one that has the tape measure mm-hmm. on it, so you can um, swap out the different little side panels that are on it. So it was really cute. Yeah. And then um, what I bought in that booth is 
um, I had been looking for linen and there was a, um, I have it right here. It was, it's that shop wool wool, but it's, it's the linen, it's called El Linio. There's a pattern, a t-shirt pattern that I've been looking at called Lace Market. Believe it or not, it's not by Heidi Kermeyer. <laughs> I will, um, and I don't have it here in front of me to remember the name of the author. But anyway, I'll I could put a link in there. But I wanted to find this yarn, and I I found it. And the color that I wanted to get that it shows the t-shirt knitted up in, I thought that was the color I wanted to get. And I actually, when I saw the yarn in person, I really I chose the blue, and it's kind of like a cross between navy and royal blue. It's kind of a bright blue, uh-huh. but. Um, I, I think I made the right choice getting this color. But anyway, I'm hoping I'm going to try and cast that on. Um, it's not going to be right away, but I want to have that for knit that T-shirt to have it for the summer. Yeah, so I bought that. It's nice. It's by Marie Green, published in Olive Knits. Oh, thank you. And the only other thing that I bought was the, because um, I like this yarn, but the Leading Men Fiber Arts, I bought the sock yarn mm-hmm. Soliloquy, which is the uh, BFL. Mm-hmm. 100% superwash BFL, and the yardage is amazing on this yarn. It's 657 yeah. yards. Yeah. It's a lot. But I'm going to make a pair well, of socks. Well, because it's nice to make a pair of men's socks, you know, someone who yeah, has that size because I, 12 or 13 feet. Four, yeah, 400 is not really, I mean, it's kind of... Um, it can be iffy. Uh, it can be iffy, yeah, for a men's sock, especially if they... Wanted to go up higher up the ankle, mm-hmm. you know, up the leg, up, you know. Yeah. So, so that's it. Is that about it? What we about what we saw at Stitches? I think so. Term- yeah. So Kelly, the other thing we need to talk about is the people we met at Stitches. Yeah, we got to meet a lot of new people, which was really fun. Mm-hmm. And we, of course, we saw the old friends too, the friends we've met along the way, and the people that we know from Knockers or that we've met at previous mm-hmm. Stitches. Uh, but it's always fun to meet new people. And put yeah. new faces to Ravelry names or Instagram names and to picture the listeners when we're sitting here recording. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I sometimes do that. I think about the people that, that I know, right? And so it's, it's kind of helpful when you're talking, you know, talking to your computer. <laughs> well, I'm talking mm-hmm. to you, but I'm looking at my computer. Um, right. It's kind of helpful to think about who's out there. You know, so, yeah, so we were able to meet some, some listeners. The very first night... Thursday night, we were walking around the marketplace, and we met Rhonda Waipahu, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, she came all the way from Pennsylvania for yeah. stitches. I had seen her pictures on Instagram. She was in San Francisco, and so I thought, oh, I wonder if she's coming to stitches. But, you know, sometimes people visit the area and aren't going to a you know, sometimes people just visit family and don't <laughs> necessarily come all this way for a knitting event, but, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was really fun to see her at at Stitches and meet her, and she brought us uh, a, a candy from Pennsylvania in the shape of, yeah. I think it's a uh, groundhog. Oh, okay. I think it's uh, p- what Punxsutawney Phil. Oh, right. <laughs> it looks like a, it looks like a groundhog. The this chocolate candy that she brought us. It was very sweet. And then um, I think I told you this, Marsha, when I was at my double knitting class, I was mm-hmm. talking. At the you know while we were working we were talking and sort of commiserating about about trying to make our brains wrap around this and and all of a sudden uh, a woman behind me she had been looking away and all of a sudden she turns around and she looks at me and she's like two U's right <laughs> so she said she <laughs> as soon as she wasn't looking mm-hmm. and just had my voice that she could hear. In, in her head, mm-hmm. <laughs> my voice in her head. When she was looking yeah. at me, it, you know, the visual cues kind of got in the way of the audio cues that she knew who I was. But when she turned away and was co- focusing on her knitting, so that was Noelle. Mm-hmm. That was fun to meet her in the in the knitting class. And then, of course, there are a few other people in class who found out that I had a podcast, so I was able to to uh, give them a card and. And um, Noelle was nice enough to talk about our podcast and how much fun it is and how nice it is for mm-hmm. her to have while uh, she commutes and stuff. Mm-hmm. So this is a shout out to Noelle and Rhonda, who we mm-hmm. saw in the very first couple of days. And then there's also we met, um, remember in the Walking Down the Aisle, we met Drummer Girl Creations. 
Patricia. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you guys had been texting each other, and we finally connected in, in an aisle someplace. Yeah. Um, and she was there with her two boys and her friend who was there with her son. Patricia was having a great time. I think the boys were having less of a great time. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. As uh, little boys are, we are done you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Um, So it was nice meeting her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's on on Instagram. We have been communicating. On Ravelry, she's Drummer Girl Makes, and on Instagram, she's Drummer Girl Creations. And I have been talking with her on on Instagram. And then she said, you know, she's going to be at Stitches. Who else was going to be there? And... So that was that was really fun to get to meet mm-hmm. to meet Patricia. And then the last day when we had the podcaster meetup, um, I was able to uh, meet a couple of new people. One is Marissa. She's a quilt otaku, and she came in with our friend Marianne. Mm-hmm. I talked to her for quite a while. That was fun. So hi, Marissa. And then I'm not sure if she listens, but but she was fu- it was fun to meet her. And then we also got to talk with Pamela, and mm-hmm. we met Pamela last year, but yes. didn't get a, really a chance to talk to her much. Uh, she mm-hmm. came with our friend Alyssa, and so we had a chance to talk with both of them during the podcaster meetup, and that was really fun. And then also Sarah, Imagine Landscape, she's the one who designs all those gnomes. Mm-hmm. I knew she was coming to Stitches. I didn't know. I figured she'd be at the podcaster meetup because they have a podcast called Imagine Landscapes, she and her sister. So I was hoping to meet her because I listened to that podcast too. Um, and so that was fun to meet her. And there, she's doing a gnome mystery knit along. Mm-hmm. So I might, have to, I might have to join in that too. So that would give me three active projects. My cardigan, mm-hmm. my, it's called Crescendo, the jacket. And then the no, and that jacket's going to take me about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Those needles are so big. I know. <laughs> and then the no mystery knit along. I think I think I will do it. I'm kind of inspired. Mm-hmm. So did you saw her her sweater that she had on? Oh, it was so cute. Yeah, darling. Yeah, really, really cute. Uh, the whole colorwork yoke was was gnomes, but they weren't too cutesy i mean they didn't have faces Mm -hmm. they were kind of idealized kind of designed kind of Mm -hmm. made into a design not just a picture of a gnome but kind of made Mm -hmm. into a design around the color color work and then all around the bottom little teeny mushrooms yes or toadstools i guess you would call them huh yeah do gnomes sit on toadstools I, Is yeah, that the connection? I think so. I guess. I don't know. I just, yeah, <laughs> I it know. seems like they're called to- to- toadstools when they're uh, in conjunction with little creatures. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, lots of, new, lots of new faces this year, which was yeah. really, really fun. Yeah. Those of you who are listening, if you're listening, it was really fun to meet you. And we hope to see you again at, at future events. Yeah, we do. Just very briefly, I just want to touch on Madrona Fiber Arts. I went the weekend before Stitches. I went to Madrona in Tacoma. I went with my friend Kim. I met people there. I and I went into booths. You know, the whole thing is significantly smaller show than uh, Stitches West. Um, you know, their marketplace could fit in. Um, the private dining room at the restaurant where we mm-hmm. ate. I mean, it's very mm-hmm. small. But what I wanted to just say is, Kim and I went into the Brooklyn Tweed booth, and uh, we started talking with Luigi Boccia. Boccia? I'm not sure uh-huh. how to pronounce his last name. And um, Kim mentioned to him that she had made a sweater out of loft uh, years ago, and she said after a few wearings, it developed holes. And she said it was not moth holes. It's just that the fabric sort of fell apart. And he said, well, that what they had discovered when they first made the yarn, they discovered it was because um, it's a very, uh, I think the reason why it's called loft, I'm making this up. I don't really know, but it's a very light yarn, yeah, yeah. light, fluffy yarn. And um, he very said it was lightly too fragile. Spun. Very lightly spun, and they found that it was because it's so lightly spun, it was a very fragile yarn. And they had heard this before from people is that it would, um, the finished 
finished project would develop holes because the yarn would just sort of fall apart. They've reformulated the yarn and spent, because they, as I say, they discovered they had this problem. And so he was kind enough to um, sell us yarn. He wanted us to knit. I, I had not knit with it before, but Kim had. And he said, I want both of you to knit with it now. And so he offered us a, a very nice discount on the yarn. So we both came back home with a sweater quantity's worth of yarn from that show. Nice. So I just, I'll put a link to their website. I'm, everyone, I'm sure, has heard of Brooklyn Tweed, but I did not know that they had had this problem. And so if anybody has had that experience, um, you know, try the yarn again because they they really try to... Um, he said that it will not fall apart now. They've really have worked hard to reformulate that yarn. So if um, you yeah. know if you've had that problem, give it a try again and see. Because um, it's nice to hear you know when a when a um, a manufacturer um, really works to try and solve a problem. Right. Um, it's nice to hear that. So I I just want to give a shout out to them. That was really nice of Luigi to extend that discount to us to tr- to try knitting with it. And I would encourage anybody else if to try the yarn because it ha- they have improved it um, pretty significantly. So cool. we'll put a, I'll put a link in the show notes to there. Okay. Um, um, but I did want to give a shout out to Luigi and Brooklyn Tweed. Okay. Well, and that um, kind of yarn, that kind of wool and spun lofty mm-hmm. wool and spun yarn there aren't a lot of options for that kind of yarn mm-hmm. you know there there aren't a lot of mills doing that so so it's good to know that that option is still a viable one yeah yeah all right okay so kelly the next thing on our list and this is going to be kind of a long episode we'll um but we, we'll see if we can go through these pretty quickly but we wanted to finish up with the february challenge remember the last episode we were yeah. talking about a way to kind of get to know each other, and we just have 10. So let's go through. Should we kind of go through this? Uh, yeah, yeah. And because you know more about this February challenge than I do, and, and as we say, we've combined the two, right? So, like, number yeah. one is library or notebook. It's right, the so two we'll have two um, choices to choose from yes. because there's a yarn love challenge and there's the February challenge. So I, I just some combine of these, them together. Yeah, and so some of these, and we were just going to pick one of them mm-hmm. as, as we're going through the list, and some of them, because you you do know more about, more about it than I do, some of them you're going to have to help me understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so number one, library or notebook. What's that mean? My library on Ravelry? Or anything that has to do with a library or anything that has to do with a notebook. It could be about Ravelry or just in general. I'll tell you mine. Library. Okay. So well, uh, okay. So I was going to pick library too. Okay. So I recently went to the library and got my library card renewed because mm-hmm. it had been since 2013 since I had used my library card, which I find that a little bit appalling because I'm a book person. <laughs> I like books and I mm-hmm. like reading, but I just got out of the habit of reading library books. And, of course, my mom gives me big bags of books that she gets from other people. And so there's a lot of books coming through the house. I don't Mm -hmm. have any shortage of things to choose to read. But I was in the habit of going to the library fairly often, and I kind of got out of the habit. Um, But something that people may not know about me is that if I had just made a donation to my library, rather Mm -hmm. uh, in the same amount of all the fines that I've had over the years... Mm-hmm. I honestly think that the Steinbeck Library in Salinas would have a a, a room with my name on it. <laughs> Over 30 years, I have accrued a lot of library fines. <laughs> Embarrassing, but true. <laughs> okay, oh, so your funny. turn. Um, well, I'm going to pick library because I could just hang. I like to just hang out in the library and just browse, not going with anything in mind, mm-hmm. but just browsing the stacks. Yeah. You know, and it seems like the stacks are getting a little smaller now than they used to be because so yeah. much stuff is online. Mm-hmm. But um, I like I like just going and browsing. Just go cruise the, like the, the yarns, you know, the knitting section or the gardening section or the cookbook section or the novel section. Mm -hmm. I like to do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, Okay. Number two, uh, local yarn shop or swatch. I'm going to pick swatch. Okay. I actually 
don't mind swatching. Um, now, I used to think swatching was, was uh, a ruse to get you to buy more yarn. <laughs> and maybe even to buy extra needles because you were supposed to, you know, use several several different needle sizes until you found that you got the gauge. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just mm-hmm. thought that was just a a bunch of hooey. <laughs> Why did I need to do that? But now I really enjoy swatching. I like looking at the different fabric that you get. Mm-hmm. I usually I usually take the yarn and put it through a needle, double it and put it through a needle gauge. Mm-hmm. And the one that it goes through nicely, kind of touching the edges but not constricted and not too loose, that's mm-hmm. what I start with. And then I usually mm-hmm. swatch with a needle that is one size smaller and one size bigger than that. Yeah. And I, I, I like doing it. I, I, I'm not opposed mm-hmm. to swatching because I like to see what the fabric looks like. Well, I, I, I say I like swatching. I do the same thing. Um, and I was laughing, too, when you are talking about, you know, your... Uh, you thought it was just a way to get people to buy more yarn or buy more needles. Um, I would do like a little one inch swatch <laughs> um, and I didn't even measure it. I, I, I mean, I didn't wash it either. Right. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's really is a recipe for disaster. So, but I'm going to say local yarn shop because I like going in and just feeling all the yarn and seeing what's new, um, mm-hmm. seeing, um, um, yeah, I don't know. I just like checking. I like hanging out in, in yarn shops. Kind of like the library. Yeah, I like hanging out, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so number three is stash, and then in parentheses it says just a peek or multiples. Oh, so is this about showing a picture of I th- Yeah, Instagram yeah, show because these are stash? Instagram challenges. It's, they're mm-hmm. sort of designed for pictures, and we're not doing we'll – we'll just have to give people uh, mental pictures. And multiples is multiple skeins of yarn. Probably, well, I'm going to say stash. I love my stash. I'm not embarrassed by my stash. I love it. I'm not going <laughs> to apologize for it either. <laughs> Good for you, Marja. In fact, I have to tell you, um, when we were at Stitches and I was talking with Tracy, she's a teacher, and she said if she has a bad day at school, she comes home and she just starts pulling out her yard at her stash and rearranging it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she feels better. So I'm kind of the same. I like to go and look at my stash and, and um, yeah. oh, kind of futz around with it, you know, and just imagine like, oh, what, what if I combine this? Or, you know, mm-hmm. So I'm going to pick stash. Yeah, I'm going to pick stash too. And I have my stash mostly visible, not at the moment because I've had to move things. But the way I like to store my stash is mostly visible. And I don't know how many project ideas I've gotten because I've like rearranged a shelf and okay, this bowl of yarn has to go in this basket with this other yarn so I can put this bowl over here and do something different on this shelf. And then all of a sudden I turn around and I look at these two yarns that I never imagined putting together, but they happen to be Mm -hmm. sitting next to each other because Mm -hmm. of where I've put them. And I'm like, oh my gosh, those look so pretty together. I have to make something with those. That has happened to me so many times. I don't always actually make the thing I imagine, Mm -hmm. you know, so, so many, so many projects, so little time, but I have come up with some really good project ideas by just moving things around, having them be out, having them not be organized by size or Mm -hmm. color or type of fiber or whatever, having them just be like, oh, these look pretty in this bowl together. And then let's Mm -hmm. put this next to that. Oh, wow, that looks, I would never have thought of putting those two together. That kind of thing has happened to me a lot with my stash. Mm -hmm. So uh, number four, Indie Dyer Love or Bag? I'm going to say bag. Like a project bag? I, yeah, I'm just gonna, or any bag. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the bag I just bought, which okay. maybe is is designed to be a project bag, but I'm not using it as a project bag. I'm using it as my briefcase now. For a while, I might change back to my leather briefcase after a while, but I'm just gonna say bag because I love that bag that I bought. That's felt. It's just it's yeah. So I was gonna say indie dye love, but now that you mentioned your bag, I think I'm gonna switch and say bag. And a couple of years ago, do you remember my brother and I went over to Walla Walla and I drove down to, I talked about this in the podcast, I went to the Pendleton Woolen Mill mm-hmm. in Pendleton, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And when I was down there, I bought a Pendleton bag, tote bag. It's huge. It's really, really oh, big. Oh, right. I, mm-hmm. 
And I guess I'm going to say that bag. Yeah. I love that bag because you can just use it for like an overnight, uh, you know, like a, instead of bringing even an overnight bag or what am I trying to say? A suitcase. Mm-hmm. You can just put, you know, a change of clothes in that bag. Um, um, a lot of times when I'm going over and working at my mom's house, cleaning, whatever, I would just load everything, my knitting in there, a mm-hmm. change of clothes in there, you know, my work clothes in there and a little lunch in there. And <laughs> so it's a great bag. I love it. So, yeah. and I like the fact that it's Pendleton too. Yeah. So I would pick bag. Well, and the leather briefcase that I have, Robert bought that for me because for years I had a briefcase from Land's End, a really uh, sort of functional briefcase from Land. I've, ha- I've actually had two of them that I really liked a lot, but I would always sort of drool over like the Filson briefcase, you know, the like mm-hmm. satchel type briefcase. And mm-hmm. then there were some leather ones that I'd la- look at and really kind of just imagine but for, so for years I would look at them in catalogs, but I never, you know, I never bought myself one because I had the really functional Lands End briefcase that every teacher carries. I don't know if every teacher carries them anymore, but when I used to go to conferences, it's like you look around and everybody's got the Lands End canvas briefcase. I'm not really interested in purses, but I've always just loved a nice like briefcase satchel messenger bag kind of bag so Mm -hmm. number five is color work or mend i'm gonna say mend robert bought some jeans that almost immediately developed little holes like like bleach had gotten on them Mm -hmm. and i don't know i don't know how it happened he he thinks that they came defective and he just never sent them back it could also be that he got something on them that he doesn't realize Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but he He'll say to me, can you fix this? Can you mend this? So I've mended quite a few things for him. Those, I mended those. And then once I mended those, he had a shirt that had a rip in it. Like, can you fix that? Sure, I'll fix it. And he's so impressed that I (laughs) I can mend (laughs) things. It's kind of funny. I'm going to pick color work only because I've been talking forever about taking a color work <laughs> class so I, didn't. I haven't done it but yes. i've been talking a lot about it so the next time um, you talk about it we want it to be about what you've uh what you've done <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> oh that's anyway. a good one okay so number six texture or local yarn shop okay so i'm gonna pick texture um mm-hmm. i really like textured stitches and when I first started early on in my knitting when I decided okay I am going to knit and I am going to actually buy yarn to knit with I got a book that is I know people maybe have seen it it's an afghan that's made out of squares it's one of those books you can get at a craft store and it has Mm -hmm. all these different squares and you make the squares and you put them together and all the squares had a different textured stitch and that was just Mm -hmm. really fun to put to like we'd go somewhere travel somewhere I'd buy a skein of yarn and again this was before I knew anything about gauge if it looked remotely like worsted weight like in my mind there was yarn and there was a size yarn was a certain size which was about worsted weight and anything smaller than that was kind of like thread so if it looked like Mm -hmm. what I thought of as yarn I, and I liked it. I bought it. So it has varying weights, probably from DK to chunky in it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you can block. I blocked all the squares to be about the same size, and I was able to sew it together. But I really liked all the different textured stitches, and it was a really good way to learn different mm-hmm. patterns. So that's my texture. I'm going to pick texture as well, and I'm going to say I like the texture of fleeces. Mm. Mm-hmm. I like just going and feeling fleeces. And that's my. I think it's, uh well, we've talked about how we like the smell, but I like going and feeling, even though they have all that lanolin and stuff, I like to, to feel the fleeces. Yeah. Nice. So, okay, number seven is uh, Pinstagram or International. Actually, because they're, ne- they're uh, numbered for us, starting with the one we started with as number one. So this would have been like the 25th of February, which is that today? No, uh, that was a 27th. couple of days ago. Yeah. So what I noticed, because I saw these on Instagram, people were posting their pins. 
Oh. So that's what that one, I guess, I, that's how people were interpreting Pinstagram. I'm going to um, choose the other one, international. When I was younger, I thought I would be traveling internationally all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was graduated from high school, I saved my money from like the my sophomore year in high school uh, to my senior year. I saved money so that I could go to Europe when I graduated. Mm -hmm. And a friend and I went to Europe for two months, traveled around. It was a it was a great trip. And while I was there, it was like I am definitely coming back. And mm -hmm. that was in 1980. <laughs> <laughs> and how many times have you been back? Not once. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. I turned into a kind of a homebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, part of it was, you know, life happens and you get, you get um, going on other things. But, but yeah, so I, I did some international travel when I was 18, and I have not done any more international travel since then. Well, and we've talked about all kinds of things traveling, but we've not done any of them other than... Mm -hmm. Our camping trips that we did when we were, you know, college age. And whatnot, right, right. Anyway. Now, you've done um, international travel by, I mean, just yeah. you and, and you, your family. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've done a lot. I mean, a fair amount, mm -hmm. you know. I'm going to say Pinstagram, and since it is pins, and my favorite pin, well, I have a couple favorite pins. Um, I have one that I bought in Scotland. Um, this past trip that I love. I wear that a lot. I have a pin that I inherited from my mother that's uh, Moonstones, which I love. And then my favorite pin that I bought on eBay is the, my poodle pin. <laughs> What's the one you bought in Scotland? It's silver and it has amethyst. It has an amethyst stone and can't think of the other stones, but it's very sort of organic. It looks like leaves kind of intertwined. Okay. And I bought it at the, in Glasgow, there's a uh, museum of, um, okay, shoot, I shouldn't talk about this now, because who is the, um, whose house is it? I think it's the Macintosh house, I think. Anyway, they have a gift shop attached to it, and oh, okay. that's where I bought the pin. Cozy or embellish? I'm going to say embellish. I really like embroidered things like embroidered towel dish towels or embroidered pillowcases I, I don't do any of that but I do like having them my mom's made mm -hmm. a tablecloth that's embroidered so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick embellish I would pick cozy I like the blanket that you wove for Ben that I have sitting in my bedroom I like my cozy afghan of made out of my dad's sweater mm -hmm. I like my cozy polar fleece uh, bathrobe. I like my cozy flannel sheets. <laughs> I like my cozy down comforter. I like my um, the sweater I made. I knit out of the I think it's the Eba that I made out of the Rambouillet. Is mm -hmm. very very cozy. That is the most comfortable sweater I I own. I think um, the wool is so soft you can wear it against your bare skin. Um, oh, yeah. It's very you know it's warm. You know how wool is warm but not hot. Mm -hmm. You know that. Yeah, so it's, I would say cozy. Okay. Favorite yarn or fit? I'm not sure I could pick a favorite yarn. I'm going to pick fit. And mm -hmm. it's been interesting how, just because to mm -hmm. say, it's been interesting how my decisions about what kind of fit I like has changed over the years. You know, initially I really didn't pay that much attention to fit, how, how well a sweater fit or, you know, and now I... I have a lot of things that I look for, like the armholes need to be big, and the arm sigh, they call it, mm -hmm. needs to be big enough. I don't want the arms to be, the sleeves to be too tight. I like it to be a certain length. I have a lot more, a lot more criteria about fit than I used to. Yeah, I don't know that I have a favorite yarn other than just wool, wool yarn, you mm -hmm. know, uh, um, and far, and then like, I guess I would pick fit as well. And I would agree with you, I'm getting more particular about fit. Um, I know like pullovers, I like a pullover with a more open neck, um, just cause I feel less constricted and less hot if the neck is open mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, wider. I think fit too, I'm learning more about how to get something. There's the, you know, the Amy Herzog notion of you pick the, how you measure your upper body. Oh yeah. Um, you mm -hmm. know, like, um, 
and how you pick the pattern that's closest to that size and then put increases um, on the front of the sweater for the bust line or wherever you need the increases or the decreases or whatever. Um, um, so I think I'm getting, I think I'm doing a better job of picking patterns to fit my body that I like the way it looks on me. And then also, um, a better job of getting things to fit the cloud cover that I just finished. I put some increases in. Yeah. Um, and I think it fit, it fits well. You know what so, to and do I'm, to and adjust. I, yes. I'm learning more about that. Mm-hmm. Um, last one, hat selfie or confession. So hat selfie. I'm going to pick that. I have a lot of pictures of myself in hats and selfies of myself in hats. There were a lot of days when I put on a hat and I think, oh, that looks really cute. And I take a selfie and then maybe I'd post it or maybe I wouldn't, depending on what else was happening that day. Um, Mm -hmm. And that was with my long hair. And then when I got my hair cut, I thought, well, that's the end of that. Because when your hair is really short, hats don't look as good. But the hats I have, I actually have been wearing them a lot with my short hair because my (laughs) head is cold. (laughs) Right. And they haven't looked bad. I I Mm kind of thought, well, I'll wear hats because my head's cold, but they won't be cute. But I've liked how they look, the hats that I had before and the hats that I have now, the way they fit even with my hair short. So I haven't Mm -hmm. taken any recent hat selfies, but, but I have been wearing hats a lot. More this year than ever before. And I'll wear them, yeah. like, put them on in the morning and leave them on all day while I'm at school, like, as part of my, as part of what I'm wearing, as opposed mm-hmm. to just put it on if I go outside in the, in the cold. Yeah. So as part of, as like an accessory, more than just yeah. a, a functional garment. What about you? I guess I'll do confession. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my knitting confession. I knit in the evening sometimes till midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's how I'm able to knit so many sweaters <laughs> because I'm left alone. No one's calling me at that hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, yeah. It's um, like stolen time that's yes. just yours. I have that Puritan work ethic, so it always feels like it's wrong to sit and do pleasurable things during the day when you should be working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's hard for me to sit and knit during the day. Like, I may sit and have, like, a cup of tea in the afternoon and knit for a little bit, but then I have to put it down. And then, so it always happens at night, and so that's why, like, sometimes I'm up <laughs> really late. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes, and I'm sure people, other people have had this experience, too, when you get sort of going on something and you want to see the next color mm-hmm. the next yeah. pattern repeat and that and i'll realize it's it's one o'clock in the morning <laughs> so that's my that's my confession mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's it for the february yeah. challenge okay anything else we have here we need to talk about i just have one recommendation um i want to mm-hmm. i want to start doing a recommendation at the end of the podcast because there's a podcast that i listen to a teaching in higher ed podcast that i listen to mm-hmm. and she and her guests always give a recommendation at the end of the podcast. And I really, I always enjoy hearing what they're recommending. And it, it's not necessarily related to anything. It's just something mm-hmm. that they've been enjoying that they're going to recommend. This particular week, it's related to a conversation that we've mentioned before. But I'm just going to recommend the book, Algorithms of Oppression, How Search Engines Reinforce Racism by Safia Umoja Noble. And okay. uh, I, I listened to it on audiobook. I took lots of notes. It reads kind of like a textbook. Um, so mm-hmm. you kind of have to concentrate. Um, and it does require some familiarity with the academic language of social justice studies. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. wait, I haven't heard that phrase before. Let me look that up. Oh, wait, I'm not sure what that word. I've heard that word before, but I've never... You know, it's not used in the discipline of mathematics and it's not used in my everyday life. So I... I think mm-hmm. I better look that up again, see, remind myself what that word is. So I've been doing a lot, while I listened, I was doing a lot of pause, Google, find the word, find the phrase, okay, go back, turn it back on. So it's not a, I can't say it wasn't pleasurable to read, because it was, I, I enjoyed it, um, but it's kind of dense in that way, you know, more like studying than just, you know, breezing mm-hmm. through a book. But I thought it was really good, and it was very interesting to hear about search engines and to think about them as things that were designed for advertisers as the customer as opposed to searchers 
as the customer mm. and that we think of them like librarians, but that they're thinking of the library that you mentioned. We think of search engines as like librarians. I mean, I often oh. said when I first got a computer, it's like having the library in my office. You know, now mm. that I have a computer, it's like having the library in my office. But search engines don't do what librarians do because librarians find things because of what the searcher wants. And search mm -hmm. engines find things to satisfy different agendas. So it with the advertiser very, things you need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in, very interesting. Um, made made me think a lot. Um, I have a lot of bookmarked clips that I'm going to go back and and reread and think about this even more. I learned a lot by reading this book, and it was it was kind of fun to be back in sort of an academic. I mean, I'm in an academic setting all day, but I'm not the student. Right. right. On the other side yeah. of the academic setting. It yeah. was kind of fun to be sort of on the other side of an academic setting, like I was reading a textbook and not in the field of mathematics, but in more in a social science, social science field. So very interesting. And I recommend it. Algorithms of Oppression by Sophia Emoja Noble. Okay, Kelly, this is going to be a very long yeah, um, episode. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> um, so do we have anything else to mention? Just want to let people know that our next episode, uh, the first March episode, will be our thank you patrons episode. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we'll be having in that is a drawing for all of our uh, daring adventurers on Patreon. And if anyone is interested in becoming a patron on Patreon, uh, they just need to go to Patreon. Patreon dot com slash to use and we have several different levels of support for anybody who's interested but if you'd like to support us and you aren't able to become a patron a patreon supporter uh, a patron uh, don't worry about it there are lots of ways to support the show uh, tell other people about it participate in the groups uh, leave us feedback and comments um, all of those things are just great ways to support the show and support write, what uh, do. write a review on um, the podcast right yeah um, yeah write a, review. write a review that would be a good thing That's too really helpful mm -hmm. so lots of ways to support us um, that don't require funds we appreciate all the support we get from people but if mm -hmm. you would like to support us on Patreon we will be doing a patron drawing we'll be drawing two patrons next episode all right. I think I'm talked out, Kelly. I know. That was a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion, and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the 2us. Doing, doing our, our part, part for, for World, World Fleece. Fleece.